somebody else, but it's Yahweh vexing. And you refuse to humble yourself to Yahweh. So it's easy to say, man, you vexing me. Because now I still don't got to humble myself. But when you say, Yahweh vexing me, what you got to do? You got to get low. You got to humble yourself. But you refuse to humble yourself, so you just point the finger at everybody else that's vexing you. It's you that's bringing me this problem. It's you that's bringing me this trouble. It's you that's bringing me down. Well, what about Yahweh? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yah. For Yahweh is righteous, Yahweh is holy, and let Yahweh be magnified. Shalom, shalom. I am already Naftali, here with you once again to bring you nothing but the truth. And this truth is the words of Yahweh, the true unadulterated words of Yahweh. And who is this Yahweh? Yahweh is the creator of the heavens, the earth, the seas, and all the endomias. He created good and evil. He created light and darkness. And I'd like to praise the mighty Yah at this hour for affording and awarding me such a great opportunity to stand in his sanctuary once again, to indulge in such a great sacrifice as this is, even the sacrifice of righteousness, even the sacrifice of the knowledge of Elohim. And I'd like to praise Yahweh also for all those who will indulge with me. Praise the mighty Yah. It was a blessing to be here last night to deal with the inspiration that the Almighty gave me, which was get understanding. It's a very, very beautiful subject. And if you know anything about understanding, as the good book has told us, that there is nothing to be compared unto it. I'm blessed to bring 
to you, get understanding part two. This is what we want to get. And the thing about understanding, as the book has told us, where is it? This viable and most viable thing to attain that's not to be compared with gold, diamonds, rubies, coral, all your expensive and most valuable minerals that come from this earth. Where can you find this? Where can you get it? Thank you. Where can you get it? How can you really, truly attain this? Can you attain it by reading day in, day out, night in, night out? How can you really attain such a great blessing as this is? And the last question I asked the people last night, because once you do attain this wisdom and understanding, once you do attain this spirit and this great viable possession is going to be written on the books. And as we closed out in the book of Daniel, let's go there. Last night, because this is very, very heavy. Daniel, the 12th chapter, For it's only 39 books in the book of Yah. And we know that Yah's judgment is 40. And why isn't there a 40th book in Yah's book? And Yahweh just going to randomly stop at 39? Well, Yahweh has let us know by his spirit that 40th book is being written now. And the question is, is what do you want that book to say about you? Let's read this in Daniel, the 12th chapter. Starting at verse 1. Praise Yah. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which stands for the children of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered, mm -hmm. everyone that shall be found written in the book. And this is why, in the message last night, I was dealing with chasing out the riches and how the wicked will put confidence and trust in their riches. The book, tells us that riches will not deliver you in a time of trouble. But when you have wisdom and understanding, this will deliver you. All those that should be found written in the book. And Yahweh have many written in the book. Names that you don't read in this book of life. You can't even read them. You don't see them. You don't know them, but Yahweh do. But when you look at all the names that are written in this book, especially the ones that's at the top of the page, like this brother, he has a whole book in Yah's book of life called the book of Daniel. A man whose life is a testimony. And you can go to him and learn how to be a man of wisdom and understanding. And his life will testify how it looks to possess wisdom and understanding. Read this next verse. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. They shall awake. Some to everlasting life. We don't believe in everlasting life. This is why we are not laboring to get it. This is something that's unattainable 
unreal. And so I might as well not even waste my time trying to get it. I only got one time around the track. I only got one time to race, and I need to get what I can while I'm here, right now. I can't wait on y'all, and I'm not about to allow my desire to be unto y'all and what he want me to do and what he want me to have and how he want me to live. No. I want what I want to have. I want to live how I want to live. And I want to do what I want to do. And that's unfortunate, but hopefully if you're listening and you incline your ear, we can inspire you that mm, don't think like that. Don't be like that. You have a grand opportunity laid out before you. Get wisdom and get understanding. That's what the opportunity is right now. If you go with me to the book of Proverbs, the second chapter, don't hold yourself back because you're young. Don't hold yourself back because you're a young man or a young or a woman or a young woman. You don't have to wait till you an uh, elder in your elder years to get wisdom and understanding. You don't have to be a man just to get understanding. You don't have to be a, pre a priest or a prophet to get wisdom and understanding. In the book of Proverbs, the second chapter, look what it says in verse 1. Proverbs 2 and verse 1. My son, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with you, so that you incline your ear unto wisdom. And see, you're not going to receive my words. You're not going to hide my commandments. You're not even going to know them unless you incline your ear unto wisdom. This is what you have to do with wisdom. You have to incline your ear. Uh-huh. And apply your heart unto understanding. And you have to apply yourself. You have to apply your heart to get this if you really want it. Because if you really want it, whether you're young or old, whether you're a man or a woman, even a child, if you want it, you can get it if you're willing to apply yourself to get it. The third verse. Yes, if you cry after knowledge. Cry after knowledge. And lift up your voice for understanding. Uh-huh. If you seek her as silver. Yeah, you seeking her, you going hard, just like all the silver that you might go hard for. The gold, keep reading. And search for her as for hidden treasures. Mm -hmm. Then shall you understand the fear of Yahweh. Because the fear of Yah is wisdom. The fear of Yah is understanding. It says, then you sh thou shalt understand the fear of Yah. And find the knowledge of Elohim. See, we haven't yet found the fear of Yah. The scripture says, where there's no fear, there's no changes. There's no fear, then you're not going to see it in their walk, their talk, their way, their life, their living. You're not going to see it because it's not there. The fear of Yah is wisdom. And look what it says. Watch, pay attention to the sixth verse. It says, then thou shalt understand the fear of Yah, uh -huh, and find the knowledge of Elohim. And then the sixth verse. For Yahweh gives wisdom see, out of his mouth. Yahweh gives wisdom out of his mouth. And see, you can read wisdom all day, but to really possess wisdom in a way where now, you done found it. It says if you find, when you find the knowledge of Elohim, you can read it all day, but that don't mean you actually have found it. You have to find it in your heart. You have to find it where now you literally possess it. And now the fruits of possessing the greatest thing you can possess can begin to flourish in your life. But the, the peculiar thing about it is that Yahweh actually had to give it to you. 
That's why the question is, is where is it? Can you, you cannot find it. There is no depths. There is no heights. There is no corners you can go to. There's no rock you can lift up. Yahweh literally has to give it to you. But it's something Yahweh must see in you. <coughs> are you crying after it? Are you searching for it? Do you Are you putting on the show for the Almighty, showing the Almighty that you fear him? The scriptures that tell you in the book of Proverbs, the eighth chapter, let's go there. Well, well let's read a couple more verses on this right here. Then we go to Proverbs 8. Uh, read the sixth verse again. I want you all to find it. I want to find it myself. And the more I find it, the more happy my heart is, the more I feel full and whole, the more peace rests in my soul, the more I find it. This is why we must be here daily. We must be here daily. Go, go to uh, read these couple verses. Start at verse 7. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Yahweh looking for righteousness. He's looking for righteous individuals, people that he can actually give this wisdom to and pour the spirit out to him. Keep reading. He keeps the paths of judgment and preserves the way of his saints. Mm -hmm. Then shall you understand righteousness. You're going to start really understand righteousness and what it really is all about. And judgment and equity. Yes, every good path. You're going to start understanding the good path. Uh-huh. When wisdom enters into your heart and knowledge is pleasant unto your soul. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge, knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Like a five-star breakfast, five-star lunch, five-star dinner, five-star snacks is just so pleasant to your soul. Because you're going after it, and you're getting it, and you're receiving it, and as you receive it, it's growing you. It's, it's inspiring you even more to get more of this knowledge. Uh-huh. Discretion shall preserve you. Understanding shall keep you. It's going to keep you. Let's go and to deliver thee from the way of evil man. From the man that speaketh for things, who leads the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Now go to the book of Proverbs, the eighth chapter. And look what it says in the 13th verse. Proverbs 8 and verse 13. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. And so we got to learn to understand the fear of Yah. Like he says, because the fear of Yah, that is wisdom. But we don't fear the Almighty. We don't even really know what that is. To be afraid of the Almighty, to be scared of the Almighty. What, what is this, tr the fear of Yah, in its total essence? And when you find this fear of Yah and the knowledge of Elohim, you can begin to possess wisdom and understanding. And why? Because Yahweh will begin to bless you with it. He's going to begin to give it to you. But it's something you must possess for, Yah to, for Yahweh to see it, to even put you on this path. But it's letting you know here that the fear of Yah is to hate evil. And if you hate evil, that means that you, you love good. You love good. It says to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the fraud mouth do I hate. And then you have where the scriptures say the fear of Yah is to depart from evil because you hate it. The only way to depart from evil is to incline yourself to 
good. Decline yourself to doing good, right? But keep reading this. Counsel is mine. Counsel is mine. And sound wisdom. I am understanding. I am understanding. When you get wisdom and you get on this path of wisdom, the more you get wisdom, you begin to get understanding. Understanding is a higher level of wisdom. Uh huh. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. I love them that love me. Do you really love wisdom? Do you really love this spirit of the fear of Yah? Do you love the spirit of departing from evil and doing good? I love them that love me. And those that seek me earnestly shall find me. If you're seeking me earnestly, and that's the spirit, that's what Yahweh looking for. We seeking a lot of things, and we searching for a lot of things. We digging for a lot of things. We laboring for a lot of things. We spending time, efforts, and energy for a lot of things. But how much effort, how much energy, how much esteem are you putting in the knowledge of Elohim, which is understanding, the fear of Yah, which is understanding, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early, earnestly, shall find me. Uh-huh. Riches and honor are with me. Yeah, that would labor to be rich for what? You laboring to be rich? I understand you doing your nine to five so you can pay your bills, so you can eat, so you can provide. But you laboring. To be rich for what? Because wisdom says you find her. Riches and honor are with me. Yes. Durable riches and righteousness. Durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. We Do you believe this? Yes, then fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead the way of righteousness. In the midst of the paths of judgment. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Because wisdom is going to lead you in the path of righteousness. Because Yahweh loves righteousness. And when Yahweh sees somebody doing something that he loves, this is when he gives you the blessings. Wisdom. Understanding. And he creates you in it. And next thing you know, you walking in the path of it. And when you're walking in the path of wisdom and understanding, it's bountiful. It's fruitful. And then the truth is this. In this path, there is no death. And when you die, you only die the death of the righteous, which is called sleep, until they wake up to everlasting life. But this is the thing. When you fear Yah, go with me to the book of Isaiah, the 66th chapter. And I want to shine a light. I want to go to some testimonies tonight to show you. When you found written in the book, and you a man of wisdom, and un only way you found written in the book and delivered is if you a man of wisdom and understanding. That's who Yahweh writes in his book. The man who got not only wisdom, but he got understanding. He gets it. He ain't no longer lost in the sauce. He's no longer confused and confounded. He's no longer sitting around in sparks of fire that he's kindled up. He's not sitting around loathing himself in the bread of sorrows. Isaiah, the 66th chapter, look what it says in the fifth verse. Isaiah 66 and verse 5. What, no, excuse me, start at verse 4. Verse 4. 
I also will choose their delusions. I'm going to choose their delusions. And will bring their fears upon them. I'm going to bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, I called, none did answer. And that's what wisdom do. See, wisdom will call. That's what she's doing. She's in the streets calling all the time. She's calling because she's a servant of Yah. That's who wisdom is. She is a servant of Yah. Yahweh has mandated her to call the sons of men. And so when she's calling, it's only because Yahweh is actually calling. But who's listening? Who's inclining their ear? Those who want wisdom. Those who want understanding. It says, when I spake, they did not hear. They didn't hear. But they did evil before my eyes. Yeah, they did evil before my eyes, which is what? They turned their ear away. They didn't incline their ear. They didn't apply their heart. And they continue to forget me. They f continue to forsake me. And they continue to choose death instead of life. Keep reading. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. There it is. They chose that which I delighted not. See, when you fear Yah, you, the essence is, I got to start choosing that which Yah delights in. That's, that's my choices now. I want to find out what Yahweh delights in. So, yes, I'm going to depart from evil and start choosing the things that Yah delight in. And he want to see me labor in the knowledge of Elohim. He want to see me seek out the wisdom and understand it. Get it. Retain her. He want me to incline my ear. He want me to apply my heart to this knowledge. Keep reading. Hear the word of Yahweh, you that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let Yahweh be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. They're going to be ashamed at the end of the day for the, the, the rock that they chose. They thought they was choosing the right stones. They thought they was choosing the right riches. But no, they chose the wrong. They chose the wrong thing. And like I said, you can't hold yourself back. Go to Proverbs, the ninth chapter. King Solomon said, out of a thousand women, he found none. That was wise. But you can't hold, let that hold you back because that's just a thousand women. There's millions of women on earth. And so don't hold yourself back because you're a woman. The thing that you can't attain wisdom and understanding and you can't possess this great thing and you don't have to be no great, prestigious, famous person. You can possess this and only a remnant know. They, they know you got it. But the main thing is that the heavens know you got it. Because the heavens gave it to you. And now you're going to be written in the book whether people know you or not. But trust and believe, when you got it, it's going to shine from you. And the people that know you, they going to see it. They going to see it. It's going to be about your neck. It's mercy and truth. But look at this. In the book of Proverbs, the ninth chapter. Let's start at verse 1. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 1. Wisdom has built her house. She got a whole house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. A prestigious house with seven pillars. She has killed her beast. She has mingled her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has set forth her maidens. She cries upon the highest places of the city. 
Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him that wants understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of my wine, which I have mingled. She said to him that wanted for understanding. And the truth is, who really want it? Who really want understanding? If you really, really want understanding, you can get it. And if you read about understanding, life is in her hands. Doable riches, long life, honor, peace, everything that you want and more that you can even imagine. This is what we want to get. Who won't understand and keep reading? Forsake the foolish and you leave. Got, if, you want, if you want it, you got to know that you got to forsake the foolish. You love your friends, but you got to forsake them. Because the scriptures, the book of wisdom is going to let you know a companion of fools is going to be destroyed. You're going to be destroyed. You're going to die the death of the foolish. And the death of the foolish is not one that goes to sleep and then they woke back up to everlasting life. The death of the foolish is one who dies and death feeds on them. And they should never arise to see the light again. So you got to forsake the foolish. And the foolish are those, they're not worried about making no statements right now to the heavens. They're not worried about making no statements before the Almighty. They're not seeking out the wisdom and understanding at all. They hate the Almighty, and they love death. You have to understand, you have to know this. Forsake the foolish. Uh-huh. And go in the way of understanding. Go in the way of understanding. Be around wise people. Go to the sanctuary. If you have to, stay to yourself and get into the book and isolate yourself. He that reproves a scorner gets himself, gets to himself shame. Yeah, you said, well, I, I want to, I got to be around, I got I to gotta wake them up, and I got to bring the light to them. No, if they want the light, they're going to draw themselves to it. But if you're around these foolish, they actually scorners, and you're not going to re receive nothing but shame when you try to share wisdom with them. Uh-huh. And he that rebukes a wicked man gets himself a blot. Mm -hmm. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hates you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Mm-hmm. Give instruction to a wise man. And that's how you know a man ain't wise. Try to rebuke him. Try to tell him something that they need to hear. Try to tell him. And then they're going to hate you. Uh-huh. Give instruction to a wise man. And he will get, he will be yet wiser. Man, you talk too much. Stop talking so much. And then he a wise man. Next thing you know, you see him. Like, man, look, he didn't, he didn't even talk as much as he used to. Because he wise and he getting yet wiser. But then you tell a foolish man, you, you talk too much. Next thing you know, he hates you. And he's still talking too much. Keep reading. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. See, the fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of Yah is when you have this spirit where you reverence the Almighty. You tremble at his words. You reverence the Almighty. You put him in an important place in your life, and people can see it. Because it ain't nothing more important than me than the Almighty. And if that's the truth, people will see that. Because you're like, hey, no, 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 no. Man, why you can't do it? I'm a servant of y'all. I got other business to do. I don't have time to be in the house of the foolish. I don't have to, no time to be around the foolish. It's going to start taking precedence in your life. Uh-huh. For by me, your days shall be multiplied, and the years of your life shall be increased. It said the fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the holy is understanding. 
And for by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of the your life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. Now look at the 13th verse. A foolish woman is clamorous. A foolish woman is clamorous. And see, the question is, is just because you're a woman, you don't have to hold yourself back. You can possess wisdom and understanding. You can be a powerful woman. And people really won't even know how much power you have. But when you possess it, you're powerful. To have wisdom and understanding but it says a foolish woman, she's clamorous. She is simple. She's simple. And simple, knows nothing. And that's what simple means. No nothing. Don't know nothing at the end of the day. She ain't trying to know nothing. The only thing she wants to know is to discover her heart. She's clamorous, and she might be glamorous. Because the truth is... A clamorous, foolish woman that knows nothing, all she's about is being glamorous and having glamour. She ain't worried about wisdom and understanding. She's not worried about increasing in knowledge and searching for wisdom and understanding and applying her heart to wisdom and knowledge. That's not her concern at all. But it can be and it should be. Look in the book of 1 Samuel, the 25th chapter. Don't hold yourself back just because you're a woman. Don't hold yourself back just because you're young. You might be a young man. See, Yahweh giveth wisdom, and he don't put no age limits on it. He don't put no gender, sex on it. 1 Samuel, the 25th chapter, verse 1. 1 Samuel 25 and verse 1. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in the house of Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Moan. Excuse me, I think that's the wrong Samuel. Samuel 25. Yep, I think we should probably be at. Let's see here. That I guess that is it. First Samuel 25. And Okay, yeah, keep reading. And there was a very there was a very great and the man was very great and he had 3000 sheep and 1000 goats and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal and his the name of his wife was Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding. I mean this woman was a woman of good understanding good understanding which means when she you got good understanding and you really possess this the scripture says by mercy and truth thou will found favor and good understanding in the sight of Elohim and man this woman got a power upon her that we will underestimate she don't have all the silver and gold and diamonds. This not no this rich woman. Even though her husband did have a lot, but this woman, what she possessed, was good understanding. Uh huh. And of a beautiful countenance, but the man of churl was churlish and evil in his doing. Mm -hmm. And he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard of the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said to the young men, Get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And thus thou shalt thou say to him that lives in prosperity, Peace be both to you and peace be to your house and peace 
be to all that you have. And look at and let's skip down just to see a little bit about this woman that has good understanding. And she's on the books as having good understanding just to let all the sisters know, don't hold yourself back. You can have good understanding. And this woman, you want to study her and see her spirit. Keep reading her story until her spirit can rub off on you. And I, a tidbit of her story is she had a wicked husband. And a lot of times when we have wicked husbands, wicked wives, we allow their wickedness to cause us to be wicked. But this woman wasn't caused to be wicked because she had a churlish husband. She kept her integrity with the Almighty because she knows, as the righteous knows, my life right now is nothing but a test. My life right now is nothing but an opportunity for me to show the Almighty what I need to show him so he can pour upon me his salvation. And that's what she was worried about. How do I know she was worried about this? Because she was a woman of good understanding. When you know what good understanding means, it tells you a whole heck of a lot. You can't get good understanding unless you understand the heavens. Ruler over this earth. Understanding comes from heaven. And she didn't have just understanding. Good understanding. So was mercy and truth about her neck? Yes, it was. You can't get it unless mercy and truth is about your neck. Did she seek out the wisdom and understanding? Yes, that's why she got it. We can say a whole lot about her. Skip down to the 30th verse. Verse 30. And it shall come to pass when Yahweh shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you. Yeah, because she knows this. She, she knows the knowledge of the Almighty. She's in tune. She knows what the Almighty got planned for this man. Uh huh. And shall have appointed you ruler over Israel that this shall be no grief to you, nor offense of heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause, or that my Lord has avenged himself. But when Yahweh shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember your handmaid. Your a spirit got to be with you to be wise like this. A spirit got to be with you. Then remember thy handmaid, uh-huh. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, which sent you this day to meet me. And blessed be your advice, and blessed be you, which have kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand. She stopped the king in his tracks. And the only way you can stop a man like this in his tracks is if you possess good understanding. You have to possess something that's heavenly. You have to possess righteousness. And skip down to the 39th verse. Verse 39. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be Yahweh that has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal and has kept his servant from evil. For Yahweh has returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. Your wickedness is going to be upon your own head. Uh huh. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. And listen, this Abigail, she's sitting here with a wicked husband. Churlish. Why she got this husband? That was in her path. Yahweh gave her that husband, put her in that path, and she embraced it, and she showed up, she showed out, and she showed herself to be a woman of good understanding. That's what's on the books about her. That's what Yah's book has to say about her, that her story is she's a woman of good understanding, and she had a wicked husband. Now, did this wicked husband hate his wife? Did he have an issue with her? Did he have beef with her? 
Well, if you got understanding, then you would know that he didn't. And why? Because she was a woman of good understanding. A woman of uh, anybody that of good understanding, it says mercy and truth is about your neck. Then you're going to find favor and good understanding in the sight of Elohim and man. She had favor in Nabal's eyes. She was a favorable woman. She knew how to conduct herself. She knew how to carry herself. And she knew how to walk with the Almighty. So, no, she didn't have no beef in her house. She was righteousness. And when you have right, she was righteous. So, when you have righteousness, you also got peace. She ain't beefing. And she know you wicked. But she knows and understands that his time and season is weighed in the balance. And she got to sit back and deal with this wicked man. Hey, it is what it is. This is my opportunity to show Yahweh what I need to show Yahweh. That was in her path. She didn't run from it. She didn't try to escape from it. She didn't scratch and try to gnaw her way through it and out of it. She allowed the Almighty to deliver her. She allowed the Almighty to bless her. Keep reading this. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let your handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And Abigail hurried and, and arose and rolled upon a donkey with five damsels of hers that went after her. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. Praise the mighty Yah. So with this woman, you see that she, she has humility. She has a kind of humility that, for a lot of people, is hard to even understand it. Because they don't have what? Good understanding. Humility. It takes humility for a woman to have a wicked husband. He wicked. So you know it takes humility to deal with him. This churlish man... But read her story and how she dealt with him. See her spirit, even when she's seen the mistakes he made and how she dealt with him. Did she deal with him like he was a vagabond? Or did she deal with him in honor? Meaning she had honor for Yah and integrity with her own self. And she didn't allow this man's wickedness to cause her to act like a fool and come at him with her spirit all the raid up and out of shape, out of form, and looking like a crazy woman. What good is that? That you show up with this crazy, wild, foul, foolish spirit because I've done something foolish, because I'm wicked. Now you're wicked with me. Now you can join hands with me, and you're going to go the same place I'm going because you ain't doing nothing better. And that's what it says about a Wise woman, she retains her honor. No matter what the motions of the ocean she's going through, she's going to retain her integrity and her honor. And this is what the book is saying about her. Look what it says. Proverbs, the 31st chapter. Proverbs 31, and it says, start at verse 20. Proverbs 31 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Yes, she, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. 
Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen and sells it and delivers girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing. Strength and honor are her clothing. How you going to have strength and honor without possessing wisdom and understanding? Wisdom and understanding is strength. And a wise woman know just because I'm a woman don't mean I'm not expected to be strong. Just because you're a woman, you're not expecting, you, you're supposed to be very strong. Scripture said, wise woman builds her house. How strong is that? You have to be the backbone and the helpmate of a whole man that got the responsibility of the world on him. You got to be strong. So which, no, you whatever it takes to be strong and to strengthen yourself, that's what a wise woman is going to do. She's going to strengthen herself mentally. She's going to strengthen herself spiritually. She's going to strengthen herself physically. Because she know I got to be strong. And that strength is a part of her honor. And it's her clothing. She wears it upon her. And sh she shall rejoice in time to come. She's not worried about rejoicing right now. She worried about strength and honor. She worried about handling business. But she's going to rejoice in time to come. Uh-huh. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Because she got wisdom. She opened her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. I mean, the law of kindness is in her tongue. Uh-huh. She looks well to the ways of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. Idleness? You can't get strong being idle. Laying down or sleeping too long. Being idle. That ain't no strength. That ain't no honor. Uh-huh. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Because they always taken care of. And they learn so much from this woman. They rise up and they call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. He praises her. Mm -hmm. Many daughters have done virtuously. There's a lot of daughters that done virtuously, and they know how to do a lot of this, and they know how to do a lot of that. And so just because a woman has done virtuously, the scriptures want to, Define the difference between one that's done virtuously and then one that's a virtuous woman. F it says, many daughters done virtuously. But you excel them all. The one that excels them all like a big I yell. She was a daughter that excels the daughters. Uh-huh. Favor is deceitful. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. But a woman that fears Yahweh, she shall be praised. She fear Yah. And how do she fear Yah? She reverence the Almighty. She put Yahweh as a priority in her life. She's putting on a show for the Almighty. She choosing the things that Yahweh delights in. So she's not worried about this and worried about that. She's worried about the Almighty. See, a foolish, clamorous woman, she want this kind of husband. She want that kind of husband. But them husbands don't even know the Almighty. Them husbands don't even love y'all. Them husbands don't even serve the Almighty. But she vain. So she, I don't care. As long as he looked the way I want him to look, as long as he got a, uh, uh, enough zeros on his check when he get paid, and he drive this kind of car, and he got this kind of business, or this, that, and the other. Six figures in a six pack. But he don't even serve the Almighty. So that's how a foolish and clamorous woman will go about. But a wise woman, she want her a man of the Almighty. A woman that fear of Yah, she want her a man of Yah. And this is the one that excels them all. Only way you can get good understanding is if you fear the Almighty. Because the fear of Yah is good understanding. The fear of Yah is understanding. Here it is. We got a whole book called the Book of Ruth. Go there. And like I said, don't hold yourself back because you're a woman. Don't hold yourself back because you 
a young man. Even a young man can have wisdom and understanding. This is why you should be trying to get wisdom and understanding now. Don't put it off because you're a woman. Don't put it off because you're young and you think that you have to wait till your elder years to worry about this thing. No. The book of Ruth, here it is. Like I said, what? Are you going to be found written in y'all's book? And if you are, what is the book going to say about you? Are you one that fear y'all? And since you fear y'all, now you got good understanding? And Yahweh has you locked in on that path where there is no death and there's durable riches and honor and extended life, blessings, is that what the book going to say about you? Here it is. You got a, a woman that is not even Israel. She ain't even an Israelite. And there's nothing prestigious about her. Matter of fact, she was a poor woman. In the book of Ruth, the first chapter, the ninth verse. Ruth chapter 1 and verse 9. Yahweh grant you that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said to her, Surely we will return with you to your people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb? that they may be your husbands. Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them till they are grown? Would you stay for them for having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me, it grieves me much for your sake that the hand of Yahweh has gone out against me. Mm -hmm. And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Ruth clave to her. She don't have no husband. And the other sister kissed her and said, yeah, you're right. I got to go about my way and get these things out of life that I know I should have and I should get. But for some reason, Ruth had a different spirit with her. She wasn't worried about, I got to go get me a husband, and I got to go get these things out of life that I should be trying to get out of life. For some reason, she had a different spirit with her. Look at this. Keep reading. And she said, behold, your sister-in-law has gone back. Your sister gone. You need to go now. Uh-huh. And to her gods. Return you after your sister-in-law. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you. For where you go, I will go. And and listen, before we read, I said the ninth verse, we were supposed to start at the verse 8. I want you to back up a little bit. Read that A verse, and then we'll skip back down to where we was at. The A verse reads... And Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. Yahweh deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. See, she already gave him a blessing. And Yahweh said he will confirm the words of his servants. He already blessed them and said, Listen, Yahweh bless you as you have blessed not only my sons who's dead now, your husbands, but you also, in your kindness to me, may Yahweh deal with you the same. And so I'm sure the other woman, she left back to her people, and the blessing of Yahweh went with her some kind of way. And she found favor where she went. But this roof got that blessing because she already was dealing kindly. She had a good spirit with her, but she did not want to leave Naomi. Now, let's get back down to where we, we was at. 
Verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to re return from following after you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your Elohim shall be my Elohim. This is faithfulness. It looks like this woman is, she got another spirit with her, where it's, it's a spirit of faithfulness. She's like, no, nah, man, I'm in this thing until it's over. You and your people is mine, and your Elohim is mine, and I'm not letting go. And look what she goes further to say. 17, where you die, will I die, and there will I be buried. Yahweh do so to me, and more also, if anything but death part you and me. That, do you see how deep this is? This woman ain't worried about what normal people are worried about. She's worried about something else. It's her faithfulness, her integrity. Like, man, this ain't, I'm not about to leave you now. That ain't, that ain't right. That ain't the good thing for me to do. The good thing for me to do is to stick with you and to stick with the Almighty Yahweh. That's the good thing for me to do. And if I don't do this thing, then let more happen to me. And so this woman was on a different level. She wasn't chasing what normal people might chase. She was proving her faithfulness. Look what it says also in the second chapter, the seventh verse. Ruth chapter 2 and verse 7. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came. And who, what kind of people glean? Yahweh says, when you have a land, you're not supposed to pick up the gleanings. For the gleaning is for the poor of the land. People that don't, they don't, they poor. They don't have businesses and possessions. And so they are dependent on others who have so they can at least eat. And she went out to glean as poor people do. Uh-huh. So she came and has continued even from the morning until now. And she tarried a little in the house. Mm -hmm. Then said Boaz to Ruth, Hear you not, my daughter. Go not to glean in another field. Neither go from here, but stay here close by my maidens. Let your eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go you after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said to him, Why have I found grace in your eyes? Why have I found grace in your eyes? And this woman, she's out there. She ain't worried about these young men. She's not all she's doing. She's worried about bringing food home to her mother, Naomi who is an old woman now, don't have sons no more, would it look like I've been your daughter? I was married to your sons. I'm your daughter now, and now that they're gone, you don't have no sons, no body, and I'm going to leave you and forsake you? What, what, what righteousness is this? What goodness is that that I forsake you now, you old woman now? No. She's out there just worried about being a good daughter. And look her hum humility. Fall on her face and said, man, what have I done to found grace in your sight? Go ahead. That you should take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. Not only I'm a stranger, but man, I don't have nothing. I ain't nobody. Nobody at all. Uh-huh. And Boaz answered and said to her, it has fully been shown to me. It's been fully shown to me. Yo, yo, you mean to tell me your light, her light, has already been shining? Uh-huh. All that you have done to your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how you have left your father 
and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to a people which you knew not before. Like wisdom will tell you, forsake the foolish and go in the way of understanding. And a lot of times that means forsake them and go around people that got understanding. People that know the Almighty. And she knows my people don't know the Almighty. They don't know the true and living Elohim. But I know Naomi do. Naomi know the Almighty. She's been talking to Ruth about the Almighty. Because when you know the Almighty, that's what you're going to do. You're going to talk to people about him. So she knew about the Almighty. That's why she chose the Almighty. Keep reading this. Yahweh repay your work and a full reward be given to you from Yahweh, Elohim of Israel. Yahweh will recompense your work. Yahweh is looking. What work are you going to put in? What work are you going to put in? He's judging your works. And a lot of our works are works of our own heart, of our own choice, and what we actually want to do with our time. But Yahweh like, look, when you going to choose that which I delight in? When you going to choose the work that I want you to do? Uh-huh. Under whose wings you have come to trust. Then she said, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for that you have comforted me and for that you have spoken friendly to your handmaid, though I am not like unto one of your handmaids. Praise the mighty Yah. And then the last scripture to read about, uh, let's go to Ruth, the third chapter, the 10th verse. Ruth That's chapter what I said. Three. Here it is. This woman, she didn't labor to be rich. She didn't spend all her strength to be rich and, and go out to see if she can get some kind of prestigious, honorable husband that got a bunch of, bunch of money and land and houses and everything. This is, that wasn't her path. She wasn't worried about that. She was actually concerned about the Almighty, and she knew the Almighty was looking at her. And that's why she said, let Yahweh do more to me than just a regular death if I separate from you or him. The 10th verse of Ruth, the third chapter. And he said, blessed be you of Yahweh, my daughter. For you have shown more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning. I mean, is she full of kindness? And that's what Yahweh looking for. How much kindness do you really have? What is the books? What is people? What is life going to say about your mercy? Is mercy and truth about your neck? Or is, or is it a complaint about you that you don't have no mercy and you don't have no truth? Keep reading. Insomuch as you followed not young men, whether poor or rich. Yeah, she's not worried about the young men. Like most of the women today, they want them a, a young, vibrant man, a, a young, beautiful, handsome man. We don't care what he know, as long as he's beautiful and handsome and he got a lot of money. And he can treat them with gifts. Uh-huh. And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to you all that you require. For all the city of my people does know that you are a virtuous woman. She a vir Everybody know you're a virtuous woman. And what do everybody know about you, old woman, today? What do everybody know? What is out there about you? What do the heavens say about you? What do the heavens think about you? The angelic servants that's giving report back to the Almighty. Are you one that's seeking wisdom and understanding? Are you a woman of good understanding? This woman wasn't rich. She didn't have no prestige or nothing, but yet, and she wasn't even an Israelite daughter, but yet she has a book in Yah's book. She's written in a book of life, and she goes down in a book as a woman that feared the Almighty. She goes down in a book as a woman that trusts under the wings of the Almighty. Here it is, Boaz, he's an older guy. But that's who Naomi told her to go after. Go after this, this, this man because he's a kin of your fallen husband. And she did so. Went right past the young, handsome guys and went right to Boaz. And that's what the book says about her. 
And now she got a place in Yah's kingdom. She got a place in Yah's book. It's beautiful. In the book of Psalms 119, let's go there. So, yeah, it ain't, you, it, it, it ain't impressive to the Almighty that you got a whole bunch of money. That ain't impressive to the Almighty. But you know what? Are you even trying to impress the Almighty? Are you trying to impress the Almighty? If you are, that means you're going to choose the things that he delight in. If you trying and that's in your mind that I am trying to impress the Almighty, that means that you, you might have a spirit that you fear Yah. Because you reverence the Almighty. If you sit here trying to impress him, in the book of Psalms 119, verse 9. Psalms 119 and verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? How is a young man going to cleanse his way? Well, to cleanse your way, the scripture says, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. The only way you can cleanse your way is through the spirit of mercy and truth. And then through the spirit of mercy and truth, you're going to find favor and good understanding in the sight of Yah. And so, yes, you can be a young man. Excuse me. You can be a young man and attain this wisdom and understanding. A young man. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto. According to your word. By taking heed to the word of the Almighty, which means you got to start listening and inclining your ear, which means you got to start applying your heart, then allowing your heart to hear. Uh huh. With my whole heart have I sought you. Who, who's seeking Yah? Are you seeking Yah? You don't have to wait till you're an elder to seek the Almighty with your whole heart. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise the mighty God. You don't have to wait. Here it is in the book of Job, the 32nd chapter. Job 32. What do we say in verse 8? Job 32 and verse 8. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding. And what he say in the sixth, the fifth verse? When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath. And actually the fourth verse, it says, now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken, because they were elder than he. And when Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. Because just because you're an elder don't mean you possess wisdom and understanding. Go ahead. In verse 7. I said they should speak. I said they should speak. And multitude of years should teach wisdom. Mm -hmm. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty Gives them understanding. Yes, it's a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty will give them understanding. And to be inspired by the Almighty, you got to start seeking the Almighty. You got to start really looking at the Almighty. And the more you look at the Almighty and incline your ears, incline yourself and apply your heart to the Almighty, the inspiration will start coming to you. Next thing you know, you're like, my goodness. It, it, there is nothing more I should be laboring in and searching after and going hard after than y'all. What silver and gold going to do me at the end of the day? What all these vain things going to do me at the end of the day? The real golden ticket is the almighty. And I can't sit around and suffer myself because I don't have a husband. Yahweh will be your husband. I can't sit here and suffer myself because I don't have a wife. Yahweh going to give you a wife. I can't sit here and suffer myself and say, well, because I don't have no children. Abraham and Sarah didn't have none. At the end of the day, Yahweh is the golden ticket. And there is no want to them that fear Yah. 
And if you fear Yah, you're going to reverence the Almighty. Like it says in closing out, we go to just two scriptures. Matter of fact, I want you to see this in Genesis, the 37th chapter. Genesis 37, the second verse says. Genesis 37, verse 2. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. Joseph was only 17 when he was feeding the flock with his brother. He was only 17 years old when they conspired against this young man. And then he ended up, you read in the 39th chapter, Go there real quick. Job 39, I mean Genesis 39, and it says in verse, verse 1. Genesis 39 and verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down there. And Yahweh was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Yeah, and, and then it says his master saw that Yahweh was with him, and that Yahweh made all that he did to prosper in his hands. Did he not have in his heart that, my goodness, I'm taken captive? He know this about himself. In the back of his head, this thing grieves him. But at the end of the day, he's not wallow in sorrow and in it because he has a relationship with the almighty he has a relationship with the heavens so mercy and truth is still about his neck he ain't forsaken mercy and truth he's not forsaken wisdom and understanding because he's going through something now Yahweh still with him because he's still with Yah and this master can see that Yahweh is with him because mercy and truth is about his name. This young man got good understanding about him. And he's young. And it says Joseph found grace in his sight. Because that's what you find when you have mercy and truth. That's what you find when you got good understanding. And he served him. And he made him overseer over his house and all that he had. And he put into his hands. All that he had, he put it in his hands. And this is how it looks on the books, when you a man or a woman that possess the fear of Yah, no matter what you're going through, it goes before you. It will shine before you. Because why? That's what you're concerned about. Now, when you're concerned about everything else other than the fear of Yah, well, them things gonna, them th that's what's going to shine from you. Look at him. He, he, he worried about this and worried about that. And the things you're worrying about is either causing you sorrow and stress and it's taking precedence of your life, taking over, or these things you're concerned about giving you some false happiness. Get wisdom, get understanding, and find favor in the sight of Elohim. And then, man, with that being said, I can't tarry too long. Tonight, I just like to praise the mighty Yahweh for another opportunity to stand in his sanctuary, to give honor and praise to his holy and righteous name, to bring edification and magnification not only to his word, but also to his name. I thank and praise Yahweh. And praise Yahweh for all those that indulge with me this night in this sacrifice. May Yahweh bless you, and I love you. Hallelujah. I 
strive to place y'all on my forefronts. But we've been raised by the storefronts. Drinking judgment, junk, 40 smoking blunts, sipping and smoking. Kept us from wishing and hoping the day they yoking. They protesting from Hong Kong to Oakland. Igniting the day of y'all is encroaching. So the way of y'all I'm approaching by walking in the statutes and commandments and staying clear of the spiritual bandits. 400 ending, no better way we could have planned it. It's all prophetic, so please understand it. Soon people will be famous, seeking y'all all over the planet. Salvation is near, and Babylon will vanish. If you know you fear y'all, then you're walking his ways. Love y'all, serve y'all, with all of your heart and soul. Yahweh, Israel's a servant and not a homeborn slave. America's been the land of our graves. All of us is confused, manipulated, ridiculed, and abused. Toy with and used, heart is bruised, sold on the ghost and worshiping cartoons. We even shook from a bada boom. Fake noise and fake news, fake results. But Yahweh's a true result and resolution, the true revolt and revolution. When we stand as Yah's army, embracing the conclusion to all men, keeping the word of Yahweh. With all the heart and soul that no one else has a son that they control. If you know you fear your fear, then you're walking his way. Love ya, serve ya with all of your heart and soul. If you know you fear your fear, then you're walking his way. Love ya, serve ya with all of your heart and soul. Serve you with all of your heart and soul.